Previously on The Trouble Man. So Newly was murdered. Well, what do you think? Daisy's out of the forgery racketer is dead. And so are you, Mr. Fick. Question. Who's Mike? And who's the dame? He's dead. Do you understand? My husband is dead. That's it. End of story. You need somebody found or found out? Call me. Life never reminds you what to do. As time goes by, it's up to you. All right, let's take it in deep. It's so deep. Just go with me here now. You're a fly on the wall in your character's climactic scene. What do you want to say to your character face to face? Now, reach in your pocket and hand them something meaningful. A glass of wine, maybe just a hug. And let's take it in deep. Oh my God, okay. All right, open your eyes. Didn't that feel great? Didn't that feel wonderful? I, I, it's important to remember that it all comes from you. Nobody has your vision. I remember when I worked on Almost an Angel, the studio executive thought that Kent Freeman was a crackpot. <laughs> I know. He didn't understand my vision. But getting fired opened up the door at a rival studio where, as a script consultant, I helped keep Glamour Boat from capsizing. Thank you. Whew. Okay, any questions? Okay, so same time next week, and let's remember, Writers aren't born. You owe me a check this week. Don't leave so quick, okay? Thank you. Oh, my gosh. And class is over. Thank you. Um, Mr. Friedman? Yeah, I, I wondered if I could get a little more feedback on my screenplay. Sure. It's, uh, it's Fic, right? Just Fic? Yeah. I, um, I remember... I remember this. I think you spend a lot of time breaking writing's golden rule. Show me. Don't tell me. Your character seems to spend a lot of time talking to himself. Gotcha. Note to self, narrate less. Yeah. The audience is looking for a spectacle. You're just showing them, you know, the man behind the curtain pulling the strings, you know, amusing himself. The man behind the curtain. Thank you for your time. Some pep talk. The man behind the strings, pulling the curtain, playing with himself. Luckily, I didn't have to think about it too long. I had other boobs to motorboat. The Widow Newly was on the move. And sure, it could have just been out for a Manny Petty, but she was all I had, so I gumshoot her out to a Burbank hotel, one that probably saw more used condoms than rich widows. He came to the house. It's probably the same guy who's been hassling you all week. Tall, uh, stupid looking. Um... He's getting a bit too close, but I'm not worried about him. Oh my God, that's Baird. We'll be out of the country soon enough. All this ends tomorrow, Janet. We'll get the rest of the paintings off our hands, and then we'll make arrangements to take care of Daisy as soon as he's released. I wish Mike were here. Mike's not here, sweetheart. I'll be back here later tonight. Let's keep the phone calls to a minimum in the meantime. I'm sorry. I just needed to see you. Don't be. I love you. The man behind the curtain, pulling all the strings, jerking off. Well, I knew another jerk off. So, Daisy, enjoying your last day in jail with your paints and your schemes while the rest of the world's out there hustling to make an honest buck? I overreacted last time. I'm sorry. Look, I'm pretty sure they're planning on killing you tomorrow. Doesn't matter. I received confirmation of a wire transfer today. 
My daughter's future is secure, even if I don't have one. So, you're in contact with your former employer. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. After all, you're using me, right? I've been paying you. Yeah, peanuts compared to what you'll bank. You needed me to get Faisal off your back and to put the heat on certain people. You weren't scared. You wanted to stay in here, buy time to negotiate a better deal. With who? Uh, the Widow Newley? With Mike and Paul Baird? Hmm. Can't say I've ever heard of Paul. Mike's always been a friend of up-and-coming artists. Look, I'm sick of this. I've got one more play to make to save your sorry ass, and I'm making it tonight. Here's the stinger, though. I don't even think you have a daughter. What are you talking about? Even if I gave her all the money in the world, I couldn't stand the thought of never seeing my daughter Haley again. Or of not being there for her when she needed me. You think about that. You call me tomorrow. I'll get back to L.A. and I'll do what you're paying me to do. Save your sad, proud, pathetic, marginally beautiful excuse for a life. We'll talk about money later. Bella. My daughter's name's Isabella. Point out an echo, take one, soft sticks. Oh, I take it in deep. And blow it out and just open your eyes. Didn't that feel, didn't that feel nice? Just wonderful? I got moist on that one.